Thank you for listening to the Ask Pastor John podcast. Today we launch into our 144th consecutive week of content. Thank you for listening and supporting us over the years. And before we start today, I have a request. If you listen to the podcast and you benefit from it, would you consider at some point today going to your app store or going into iTunes and leave a rating and a comment for the Ask Pastor John podcast? These ratings and comments are really vital in helping us reach new listeners in the future, and your help would be appreciated. On to today's question from Clayton in St. Paul. Pastor John, in your recent Look at the Book episode on Romans 9, 22-23, you argued that the deepest answer to the question, why doesn't God save everyone, is that he is seeking to put the full panorama of his glory on display for the vessels of mercy. But, and here's the kicker, How would you respond to the claim that the cross is already the fullest and most ultimate expression of God's love, grace, justice, and wrath? In light of the cross, isn't reprobation unnecessary for the full display of God's glory? Excellent question. Wow, yes. (laughs) So good. Uh, um, So let let me read the text that Clayton is referring to so we all have it in our heads and then and then give a, a possible answer. So Romans 9, 22 and 23, what if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known, this is why he would do that, in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory. And my argument was that the ultimate reason God shows his wrath and his power is to make known the fullness of his glory as gracious and just, including the justice of wrath uh, and, and righteousness on unrighteous and impenitent rebels and sinners. Now, Clayton's question is, does the death of Christ, who bears the wrath of God for all who believe and displays the grace of God supremely, doesn't that event display God's wrathful justice on Jesus in our place so supremely that hell would not be necessary as a display of God's justice and wrath in order for God to be known for what he truly is. Now, two, two observations. One is, is method, and then the other is a, a exegetical theological answer to the question. Methodologically, I work from what texts mean toward understanding what reality is, not from what reality is back to what texts mean. At least I try to. That's my goal. And as far as I can see, Romans 9, 22 and 23 and other texts teach that wrath is coming on the world of unbelievers, and and it will be eternal wrath for those who don't repent and fly to Jesus. Therefore, I don't think I should start with the assumption that the cross makes hell redundant, and then come come back and say, well, these texts can't mean what they say. So that's my method. Now, here's here's this is more important. Um, it may uh, be that Clayton has posed the question differently than the Apostle Paul would or did. Clayton is asking, if the cross is the supreme demonstration of God's grace— and righteous wrath against sin, why do we need hell to demonstrate God's righteousness and wrath against sin? But Paul seems to ask this question, how can we see the cross and the supreme demonstration of God's grace and and righteous wrath against sin unless we see that he is thereby saving people from real coming eternal Wrath. In other words, the the wrath that's coming is indispensable for understanding the very nature of what happened on the the cross. So do you see the difference? For for Paul, 
It's precisely the reality of the coming eternal wrath of God that makes the meaning of Jesus' substitution supremely glorious in absorbing that wrath for all who believe. If, if there were no eternal wrath for us to see and to be frightened by the glory of the death of Jesus in the removal of that wrath would be scarcely visible. I think Paul would, would say that. If, if there were no future eternal wrath, we could say Jesus is amazing in absorbing wrath, but in Paul's mind, uh, and I think in God's reckoning, this would not carry the day in amazing God's people forever. There would never have been any, any future threat of eternal wrath that we could see, that we could taste, that anybody was ever enduring. It would, it would be a non-existent possibility that never came to be. Now, is that biblical? <laughs> I mean, is that idea biblical? Well, I think so, because Romans 5, here's the way Paul thinks, Romans 5, 9, since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Verse 10, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we, shall we be saved by his life? For Paul, the glory of the death of Christ is seen precisely in the fact that wrath is coming and we, because of the cross, will escape that coming wrath. That's how we're made to feel the wonder of what he achieved in saving us. We see it coming, and he's going to shield us from that and protect us. First Thessalonians 1.10, we wait for God's Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. So Paul's answer, I think, for Clayton would be, future righteous, divine, everlasting wrath on unrepentant sinners does make the glory of the cross more wonderful. It doesn't make it less wonderful. It makes it more visible. It just makes it more visible. The existence of hell is and always will be a vivid reminder of the hell that Jesus bore for all who believe. Great logical connections, Pastor John. Thank you. And there's a great principle in there, too. Work from what texts mean towards understanding what reality is. That's so important. Thank you. And thank you, Clayton, for the question. Keep your questions coming into us. Go to desiringgod.org forward slash ask Pastor John to send us a question. You can also download the app and listen to past episodes there as well. I'm your host, Tony Rank. I'll see you tomorrow when John Piper fields a question about whether 1 John 5.18 says that real Christians have stopped sinning. We'll see you then.